My name is Scott Golly, and I am currently Vice President and Fire and Building Safety Service Line Leader for Special Hazards. Um, I've been with Jensen Hughes now for a little over 21 years, and I've been in the industry for um, a little over 28 years. All right, so we do want to go in and do a thorough assessment of the existing system. The system may be reusable, or at least parts of it might be. I won't say that every system is going to be fully reusable. When we look at the piping, you know, obviously look at the condition first. Client may say, oh, I need to reuse the existing piping. But if we're looking at the piping and the corrosion is off the charts and um, there's visual corrosion on the exteriors of the pipe and we've got pinholes in the pipe, maybe reusing the pipe isn't the right answer for the client anyway, right? So educating a client on the condition of the system. A lot of these AFFF systems were put in a long time ago where they had water oscillating monitors. The piping is honestly not in great shape. And, and even if they could reuse it, which it turns out those nozzles would work fine, the piping is in such bad condition, we're really trying to convince the client that maybe, maybe the right answer isn't reusing a system that you're going to have other problems with in the future. You do need to do hydraulic analysis. So then the question is, well, how do I do hydraulic analysis when I don't know what foam I'm going to use? So that's jumping ahead a little bit. And the discharge devices may work with your product. It depends on the aspirating ability, the K-factors, elevation of the sprinklers, where they're installed, things like that. So what we have found is you really want to pick your foam first. Uh, choose a product. And then with uh, UL162's IQ guide, uh, you can work through what things are listed with that product. What we actually found was that is a good option. But once you found a product that we have confirmed is a, is a quality product, if you contact the manufacturers of the product, they'll help you through the process of picking what does and doesn't work with the product. Remember, we're talking about aspiration really matters. So if aspiration really matters, we need to look at what kind of uh, expansion ratios we're getting from these products. Um, you know, Solberg is is Perimeter Solutions now. Uh, Perimeter Solutions is a massive company. They just did a presentation for SFP here locally in the Mid Atlantic, and they're they're very willing to work with you on how products work with their product once you've selected it. Um, you know, when you look at the system, make sure that you're looking at the hydraulics of the foam, because again, if we're looking at a far more viscous product or even a non-Newtonian fluid, we may not be able to pump it with any of the equipment we have. So make sure you're, you're working closely with the manufacturer that's been selected. So looking at the key firefighting capabilities, increased uh, aspiration is really critical. Five or above is what we're looking for. And some of the manufacturers will tell you they don't need to aspirate their product a, a lot. They're aspirating somewhere in the two to eight expansion ratio range. Any of the old protein foam discharge devices, anywhere from 6 to 20% expansion ratio. And the manual firefighting equipment, you know, fog nozzles, um, smooth bore, straight tips, stack tip, whatever, whatever you want to call them, depending on how old you are in the fire department. They don't aspirate very well unless we're looking at the foam, uh, the, um, the fog nozzle systems, the, the rotary task force tips or things like that. Uh, smooth bores do not aspirate very well. Now, that said... There are smooth bores in the oscillating monitors that have aspiration built into the tail end of the of the nozzle, so they may they may work. Burn back, which is the gradual increase, the gradual degradation of the foam, so that the the fire can burn back over the foam. That increases with increased expansion ratio, which is counter to what we just said, right? We really want the product to expand because that's how it best suppresses. But in the same re respect, we also get um, higher burn back there. So burn back is varied uh, between product types uh, when we talk about Newtonian versus non-Newtonian. A lot of the products that I'm seeing that, that seem to be UL-162 are, are um, Newtonian. Non-Newtonian provides an additional three to five minutes of protection. But again, there may be some more complexities in how we pump it and move it. Um, so the hydraulics in the system become really critical when we assess a non-Newtonian. That's PFAS free foams. Uh, so they provided uh, protection from Jet A for three to six minutes uh, or three to four minutes on gasoline. So just some examples of, of what kind of protection we're getting from burn back on, on those foams. So what are our alternatives? And, and this is the question I get the most when, when people kind of cold call me with, hey, I need help on foam replacement. There are options, right? Are they drop in or not? It depends. Uh, I have been pleasantly surprised in two projects so far that we were able to find pretty much a straight drop-in product. Although I say that, we found a drop-in product and then decided, well, I don't really think we want to risk the environmental aspects of fluorine-free. So we did find a drop-in product and we still chose not to use it. So again, when, when we talk about drop-in products with some of the different 
nozzles, aspiration methods, things like that. It, it takes a site survey. It takes knowing the system pretty well that's existing. So you're, you're going out, you're taking notes, you're looking at the, the sprinklers, you're looking at the piping, you're trying to get as-built drawings. You know, if these systems were installed in the 70s, uh, we all know that as-built drawings will be readily available as soon as we walk in the door. Now, the reality is anybody that's been in this industry for more than six months knows that as-built drawings, even if you installed a product last year, they're probably not around anymore. And I don't know what happens to them, but as-built are never readily available. So you may be looking at walking a system down and kind of regenerating as-built drawings. So obviously, water-based suppression, sprinklers. Uh, I like sprinklers and water because it's kind of hard to argue the environmental impacts of water. Now, granted, when we mix it with byproducts of combustion, maybe it does get yucky but at least the water itself, the suppression component is pretty unarguable. Um, there's new products out there, the Ignitable Liquid Drainage Floor Assembly System, ILDFA. Uh, the only brand that I'm aware of right now is Safe Spill. There may be others out there. It uh, kind of looks like a mesh flooring cover. It's rated for the weight of the aircraft. Um, it's almost like a waffle product with water channels in it when the, when the liquid fuel spills into it. Um, it basically flushes water through this graded floor system, pushes it into a drain, and then washes it away with capillary effect to a containment system and, and basically makes it impossible for the fuel fire to spread. Um, so interesting product. Uh, I, I will caution you. So far, what I have seen is it's extremely expensive. Uh, it can be installed modularly, though. So you could build it around, if you know your aircraft configuration, let's say we're talking about a hangar. If you know your aircraft configuration, you can build it specific to your application. I know I only have one jet that sits in that corner. You can just put it in that corner, but make it expandable so that in the future we can add in zones to this system. And it is a zone system. It has detection in it. It does have inspection, testing, and maintenance that goes with it. It is critical to keep it clean. What we've been told by the manufacturers, it also comes with what they call a pretty hefty warranty of 10 years that includes inspection, testing, and maintenance. You can expand it out. Safe spill is actually pretty good to work with, but the, the price will tend to turn off a lot of clients. Uh, water mist is being applied in aircraft hangars in a lot of locations throughout the world. And they've basically developed a floor level nozzle that pops up under pressure and creates a water mist under wing and under aircraft over the fuel spill. Modeling looks very appealing as far as efficacy of the systems. So I've been looking at it at a couple of the applications we have. It is not a cheap installation. It looked like uh, initial thoughts through the nozzles were somewhere in the $1,500 a piece range. But uh, similar to the ILDFA system, you can install it specific to your application. So you can protect a particular aircraft and not put it everywhere. So, and there's, there's all sorts of water mist systems out there. There's compressed gas pushed water mist systems. Uh, there are mechanically pressurized systems that, that use positive displacement pumps to get really high pressures. You know, when we start talking about positive displacement pumps and high pressure pumps and things like that, just understand that with that comes complexity, cost, and, and potentially more challenging inspection, testing, and maintenance. If I can build a system with stuff that we're used to maintaining for sprinkler systems for the last, you know, 40 years, it's sure going to make it a lot easier to find people to maintain that system for me and, and take care of the system for me. Um, so just be cognizant of that. You know, when you're looking at these systems and manufacturers are convincing you it's the best product out there, look at the big picture. Am I doing the best for my client? You know, we, we have started looking at clean agents for some of these applications. You know, this presentation mentions a lot aircraft hangers, but some of the more prevalent projects that we've started getting are manufacturers that are using alcohol-based fragrancing products or things like that, where they're using um, in a fragrancing room or a fluid transfer room, they're using a triple F to protect an alcohol-based solvent or fragrance or something of that sort. So we may be looking at smaller applications. And um, although, yes, you can do local application on clean agents, so you, you could potentially come up with a solution for a large hanger. It, they're probably not a great drop-in fit, but for manufacturers that have a fragrance room or alcohol handling room, looking at uh, clean agents may be a good option or water mist. Um, you know, Vortex and, and High Fog and some of these products that use the nitrogen pushing, they're pretty affordable and they're water-based. So the environmental concerns are very low uh, and they're pretty easy to maintain. Uh, and then, of course, we, we can always look at uh, which 
most of the applications I've seen overseas where they're looking at aircraft hangars and using water mist, they're also being smart about how they manage the aircraft hangar. You know, if you can compartmentalize it, break it up, break your fire zones into smaller areas, I inherently reduce my risk and give fire department time to get there and respond. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the applications I've seen when the fire department responds, if you tell them it's a fuel fire, they're probably putting AFFF on it right now. <laughs> but as we slowly get rid of the AFFF, compartmentalizing hangers or reducing your fire size certainly is a viable fire protection approach, right? It doesn't all have to be systems-based. You can do diking, you can try to contain and direct fuel spills uh, and limit the spread of a fire until response can get there. My name is Scott Golly, and feel free to reach out to me anytime with any questions. I'm certainly here to support you. Thank you.